I see you on the PI student at the University of Cumberland. Are you Miss Jane Doe? Yes. All right, just give me one second. Let me wash my hands. Okay. Okay, Miss Doe. Let me go ahead and check your bracelet, check your birthday and MRN number, and make sure you're who you are. Miss Jane Doe, birthday one one seventy two. Yes. Okay, so I understand that we're here today for um, head, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, throat, all of that, bing, bing, right? Yes. Okay, so first off, we're just going to start with the skin. So just some general questions. Um, have you noticed any changes in your hair, your skin, or your nails, any redness, any itching, any lesions or moles that you may have seen? Okay. Mm -hmm. So have you ever been diagnosed with melanoma or skin cancer before? Mm -hmm. Okay, and have you ever had any biopsies? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just going to have you put this gown on so we can check all aspects of your skin to make sure we're not missing anything. We'll just use natural light for right now, but if we need to, we could use intense light to check everything out in depth. Um, so, um, just a quick question, do you check yourself often for moles? Okay, so just good to check yourself about once a month when you get in the shower, just to make sure that there's no weird moles that you got going on. Just have somebody help you, but if you see any concerns, just get it checked out, okay? So first off, I'm just going to check the color of your skin. Have you noticed any redness, any yellowing, or like jaundice, or blue, or like cyanotic paleness, or anything like that? Okay, great. So I'm just going to check for the moisture and make sure it's not too oily, or sweating, or too dry. Then we'll check the texture, make sure it's um, <clears throat> not too rough, or too soft, or smooth. Then the temperature, we can go ahead and feel on both sides. Make sure it's got a good temperature. And then we can check the mobility and the turgor. Make sure it has a normal speed of rise and fall. And then we would look for any lesions on the body. And if we found any, just palpate those and document them and um, see if they're dispersed anywhere else. So um, I'm gonna check your nails real quick. And we would also check the toenails as well. So we're just going to note the color of the nails, make sure they have good color, that they're not so, not cyanotic. Go ahead and press and check for a capillary refill that they're good. We would also look for any lesions, any um, lines, or anything like, or pitting in the nails. And also we would check the clubbing, look at the proximal nail fold and the nail plate, and make sure that it's less than 180 degrees. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to your head. So if you have on a hair piece or a wig, can you please remove that please? Okay, great, thank you. So first we're just gonna do the hair. We're just gonna look at the distribution of the hair, the texture and the pattern, just to make sure that there's nothing going on that's too dry or brittle or something like that. So then we're gonna move on to the scalp. We'll look in the scalp, make sure there's no scaliness, look for any hidden lesions, or any moles that could be of concern in the scalp. Then we'll go ahead and palpate the skull. Fill the contours of the head. Make sure that it's symmetric. Look for the suture lines, occipital, and then the parietal suture lines. Make sure that they feel good. And then we're gonna look at the face. Get your out of the way. <laughs> look at the face. Go ahead and palpate the face. Notice any facial expressions that she may make in case there's any soreness that she doesn't tell me about. Um, also, make sure the face is symmetric. Check for any edema or masses that she may have. Okay, so we're all finished with the hair and the skin, so we're going to move on to um, eyes. So first we're just going to check your near or far vision. So I'll just have you stand 20 feet away from this smelling chart. You're going to read that and then tell me, read the smallest line that you can, at least half of the line, or half of the letters, and, and the numbers beside that will tell us what your vision is. So now I'll just have you hold this about 14 inches away from your face. If you can read that, then that's great, but if you can't, we would determine if we would need to use reading glasses to check your mirror vision. So next we'll go ahead and check your visual acuity. I'm going to have you scoot like right here. So we'll check your visual acuity or your peripheral vision. So I'm going to have both my hands about two feet lateral to your ears. I'm going to move my fingers and you tell me if you see my fingers at the same time. Yes. Okay? Yes. Okay. 
So you see them at the same time, that's a normal result for, for peripheral vision. So now I'm just going to check your alignment of your eyes and just make sure they have a good position and alignment. So just look straight at me. I'm going to shine this right in the middle of her eyes and make sure she has a good reflection of the light, it's not medial to the nose. Okay, now we're going to look at your eyebrows. Make sure that they have good quality and quantity and distribution. Look for any scaliness or any underlying lesions that could be there. So we'll move on to your eyelids. First, I'm going to just document the width of your palpebral fissure. Go ahead and open real quick. Make sure it's about the same size for both eyes. Go ahead and close. For her eyelids, we'll look for any lesions, any swelling, or any redness. And then we'll also take a look at her lashes to make sure she's not got any scaliness or anything going on there. Okay, great. So first, we're going to look at your lacrimal gland. Just take a look at that and make sure it's a good color. Also ask the patient if she's had any um, excessive tearing or dryness in her eyes. Now we're going to take a look at the conjunctiva. Pull her eyes down like this. Note the color, the vascularization of the conjunctiva. Then use both fingers. Open her eyes wide. Have the patient look up, down, left, and right. to check out the sclera. Make sure it's a good color. And um, now we're going to look at the cornea. So I'm just going to have you look straight ahead into a distance. I'm going to come to the side of you to check the cornea out. Make sure that there's no opacities or cloudiness in the cornea. Do the same thing for this side. And then we'll check out your lenses real quick. Looking for about the same thing, any opacities or any white glares that we need to make sure that aren't there. Okay. So next I'm going to look at your iris just to make sure it's, they have good, a sharp border. They're rounded and not dispersed weirdly. Alright, so that looks good. So we're going to test out your pupils. I'm going to note your pupils real quick and make sure they look about the same size and shape and that they're symmetrical. So I'm going to test your pupillary reaction. So I'm going to dim the lights first. <clears throat> okay. So I'll just have you look off into a distance and I'm going to check your reaction to your pupils. So first we're going to look for a direct reaction. Make sure the pupils constrict. Direct there and a direct there. So now we're going to look at consensual, look at the opposite eye and make sure it has a consensual reaction to light. And it does. So now we're going to test her pupillary near reaction. So I'm going to have you look into the distance. Better distance. Look into the distance and I'm going to place my finger about 10 centimeters away from your face and then when I tell you to look at my finger, just look at it and we'll make sure your pupils constrict like normal. So go ahead and look in the distance. Okay, look at my finger, look away, look at the finger, okay, good. So next we're going to check your extraocular movement, so just follow my finger, don't move your head. And then we'll test her convergence. Have the finger about five to eight centimeters away from her eyes just to make sure she's got good convergence and she does. So next I would normally check her upper palpebral conjunctiva. So what I would do is take the eyes, on, do this on both sides, take the lashes, pull them up, pull them up and out and then take a cotton tip or a q-tip, place it about one centimeter above her lid margin, pull the eyelid up and fold it to where it touches the top of the brow and have a look at the upper conjunctiva, also noting color and the vascularization. So next we're going to use the ophthalmoscope. For this we would also have the room dark as well. So I'm going to make sure that this is set on the largest beam. And it is, and it's at zero diopters. So I'm just going to hold it, my, left hand, or my right hand for the right eye, left hand for the left eye. Have my finger on the side just so I can direct the focus. Also, uh, place the medial aspect of my bony orbit and then come 15 inches away from the patient. You can scoot down that bit just a little bit. There you go. There we go. 15 inches away from the patient, about 15 degrees laterally. Go ahead and place this on your eye. 
look for the red reflex. Once we find that, I'm going to go ahead and place my hand on her eyebrow and start to move 15 degrees inward following the central artery, looking for the optic disc, the retina, and vessels. Alright, so I'm going to give your eye a little break. So go ahead and look into this light right now, checking the macula and the phobia. So for this side, we're going to do the same thing, held, held it the same way. Just look into the distance for me, please. 15 inches, 15 degrees laterally, check for the red reflex. Start moving in, following an artery. Go ahead and look into the light. Okay. Okay, so next we're going to move on to your nose. So I'm just going to look at the anterior and inferior parts of your nose just to check that it's symmetrical and that there is no bumps or anything like that that we need to be concerned about. I'm going to go ahead and raise it up, make sure that it looks okay. I'm going to get my light source and our largest speculum. Go ahead and lift the nose up. Check both sides of the nose. Avoiding the nasal septum, looking for redness. And any swelling that we may see. Um, next I'm going to have you hold one side of your nose and then take, exhale and then take a deep breath in with your nostril. Okay, do the same to the other side. Okay, so we're going to palpate your sinuses real quick. So first we'll start with the frontal sinus. And note if there's any um, tenderness in those sinuses or if we feel any crackling or anything like that. Feels good. So we're going to move on to ears. So for both ears, I'm just going to look at the auricle and meatus. Make sure that there's no will, um, swedness, redness or swelling or any lesions that we need to be concerned about. Look at both real quick. Get a speculum. The largest speculum that we have. So I'm going to hold this between my pointer and index finger. Go ahead and pull the ear up and out. Just open up the canal. Bypass all the hairs. And look inside the ear for any redness or swelling or any foreign bodies that she may have. Also taking a look at the tympanic membrane. Looking at the cone of light, the color and the um, contour of it. Also the handle and the short process of the malleus. I do the same for this ear. Same thing, note color, redness, any form bodies. Look at the tympanic membrane, kind of light, contour, color, and the short and the short process in the handle of the tympanic membrane and the malleus. So we're gonna perform some hearing tests real quick. First we're gonna do is the whisper test. Um, so I'm gonna hold one here and whisper three things and you tell me what I say. 4-1-B. 4-1-B. Okay. And then this side is 7-8-A. 7-8-A. Okay, great. So we're going to perform the Weber test next. I'm going to use this tuning fork. So I'm just going to give this a little strike and tell me if, place it in the middle of the head and tell me if you can hear it on both sides. I can. And is it equal? Uh-huh. Okay. So next we're going to do the rhymes test. Place the tuning fork on her mastoid bone and you can tell me when you stop hearing that. No. Can you hear this? Mm-hmm. So 
So air conduction is greater than bone conduction. In the left ear, so let's check the right. Again, place it on the mastoid bone. No. Okay. Okay. You can do that too? Mm -hmm. Alright, air conduction is greater than bone conduction in the left ear. Okay, so now we're going to check out your mouth. Make sure, note the lips, note the color, the moisture, if there's any scaliness, any dryness, um, any cracks, any lumps or ulcers. So, next. Oh, I need a time to <clears throat> So next I'm going to check out the oral mucosa. So I'll just have her open her mouth, use the tongue depressor, look around for any um, lesions, any redness or swelling, any white plaques or nodules. Then we'll take a look at the gums, make sure they're pink in color. Look at the margins of the gums and make sure they're not swollen and look for any lesions or ulcers she may have on the gums. Then we'll check the teeth, make sure she has all of her teeth but none of them are missing. That they have a good size and shape and none of them are broken or if they were loose we would wiggle those with their index and thumb then we'll check out the roof of the mouth note the color and um, the architecture of the hard palate now we'll look at the tongue go ahead and stick your tongue out look at the tongue look around the tongue make sure that there's no any swelling or redness or any lesions or ulcers lift your tongue up please look at the floor of the mouth also note the color make sure it's pink if there, there's no swelling or ulcers um, and redness. Okay, now open. We're going to look at the pharynx, the back of the throat. I'm going to hold the tongue depressor on the tongue. Ask her to say, ah. Oh. Make sure there's a good rise and fall of the soft palate. <clears throat> look for any um, swelling or exudate or any um, enlargement of her tonsils if she had them. Okay, so next we're going to check your lymph nodes. Um, so when you look at the lymph nodes, we're going to look at the size and shape of them, if they're discrete or if they're matted, the consistency of the lymph nodes, or if they're really tender. So first we're going to do preauricular, then postauricular, and then occipital. Check temporal. Or not temporal, I'm sorry. Tonsillar. Then we'll do submandibular. Then we'll do submental. The superficial clavicle. No, superficial cervical. The posterior, hold on, superficial cervical, posterior cervical. And then the deep cervical. And then the supraclavicular. Okay, so the last thing we're going to check is your thyroid and your trachea. So first I'm just going to fill of the thyroid cartilage. And then fill the cricoid right under that. Just to make sure that um, the thyroid is aligned and the trachea is aligned in the middle. We're just going to note the width, the width or the width between her super or her muscle in her neck, the sternocleidomastoid. Just make sure it's the same width and that it's aligned. Looks good. So I'm just going to step behind you, so don't be harmed. Fill in your um, thyroid. So first again, we're going to fill the thyroid, or thyroid cartilage. Move down to the cricoid. I'm going to ask the patient to take a sip of water and swallow so I can feel the rise and the fall of the isthmus under my, the pads of my index fingers. So now I'm just going to um, mis move over your trachea and this is going to tell me if I can feel the gland of the thyroid on that side and we can feel it on that side. Okay, so we're all finished. I'm going to give um, the doctor these results or if I find anything. 
So it was nice having you in today. So thank you so much for being here. And we'll let you know about any results that we have. Thank okay. you. Okay.